Hey, my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great. I'm doing great. Today we are going to go visit and pay our respects to one of my favorite TV dads. When I was growing up watching the reruns of this guy, this guy was, you know, he was the TV dad, I think, you know. Uh, we're in Skokie, Illinois. He was actually raised in Highland Park in his early years before moving out to Muskogee, Oklahoma. Today we are talking about John Robert Reitz, who changed his name to Robert Reed, and we knew him as Mike Brady on the Brady Bunch. Days with Jordan the Lion and you all, it begins right now. We got a little bit of rain last night, but nothing this little guy can't handle, right? We'll go for our walk before we go visit Mr. Brady. This is a big, big place. So we're looking for Annex 6. Even though he was John Robert Reitz Jr., he is buried as Robert Reed. This is not his headstone, but we are looking for Robert Reed. Right over here, one of the things you can look for is there's a big building right back here. There's a headstone denning in front. But here you can see, here are some reeds, some family members. Frank, Bess, and Harvey. Then over here is Robert Reed. Robert Reed. A great actor. Good night, sweet prince. That's nice. They even put his name on there. Robert's family was from here. His father worked for the government. But when Robert was about to enter high school, his father decided to move the family out to Oklahoma. Muskogee, Oklahoma. And his dad ended up going into the turkey farming business. So they had a turkey farm of thousands <laughs> and thousands of turkeys, but Robert had no interest. When he got there to the town, he got immediately involved in the theater and the drama stuff. He ended up getting cast for the lead in all the plays while he was in high school. He even got the other members of the drama department to do it independent theater with him in town where they would rent out the Mason Hall and would put on their own performances. Robert was known throughout his entire career as being a perfectionist when it came to be an actor and it all was kind of starting there. His friends there said he always knew all of his lines. If people around him didn't know his li their lines, he'd get upset and work with them and say, hey, if you're going to do this, why not do it great? Why not do it as well as you can do it? And he excelled at this and in fact he started finding a love in Shakespeare his time in high school and did Julius Caesar the local news station saw the video of it and hired him on to do their ads and to be uh, an anchorman he was actually the youngest person to work that television station so when Robert was ready to graduate he decided to go to Northwestern which brought him back out this way Northwestern had a really good theater school. That's where Charlton Heston had went, and he decided to go there. And there he submerged himself even more in loving Shakespeare. He would have a teacher during summer stock that, it was actually the lady running the summer stock had been a, a legendary teacher with Northwestern. And when he went to work with her in Pennsylvania for a summer, he just absolutely fell in love head over heels. And that was what he was gonna do Pretty much for the rest of his life he came back to Northwestern and continued acting, continued getting the starring parts. He was always the leading man and even though you know he was really good looking he would tell one of his friends there secretly because all the women there seemed to really be interested in him. He would go on dates but nothing would ever come of it and one of his friends started joking with him was like you know what is your problem why are you so nice and he said I have to tell you you know I'm gay. Please don't tell anybody. And so he knew even from the, the early days that he was a gay man, but 
his time at Northwestern, he started dating a woman and they apparently fell in love and they ended up getting married. Shortly before they were ready to graduate, they just decided to up and take off to London. Robert enrolled in the, the Royal Academy for Dramatic Arts while his wife was studying ballet and they would stay there submerging themselves in the culture for a year. Apparently he absolutely loved living in London. I was kind of surprised when you read that he would even come back because he loved so much about it. But they did end up coming back and they went to New York and he started doing Shakespearean theater in New York for about two years. Was getting parts but television was becoming so popular that they decided as a couple to move out to Hollywood and try and get in television. And once they got out there, she got pregnant, had a baby, and within about a year of living out there, Robert came home one day and she had taken the baby and the furniture and everything and had decided to leave Robert. She divorced Robert and moved back to Chicago with the baby. So it's kind of interpreted or kind of believed that she must have discovered that he was living a secret life as a gay man and that's possibly what ended it. He always kept that side of his life private. He never ever really talked about it to anybody throughout the rest of his life. Uh, he would be acting, he would get some parts on like Father Knows Best, but then he got discovered on there and got a really good part on a lawyer show called The Defenders. And that lasted for four years, but it actually filmed in New York. So he got to go back, live in New York, go back to watching the theater, participating. Um, eventually he would take over Robert Redford's part on Broadway for Barefoot in the Park. And then he got a deal, he got an offer from Paramount for a studio contract. And they had a specific project they apparently wanted him to do. And so he agreed to do it, move back to Hollywood. And then once he got there, they told him that that project had been shelved and that they wanted him to make a pilot for something called the Bradley Bunch. You see, Robert was actually really funny. As you could see on the Brady Bunch, that's what the Bradley Bunch was. Obviously it was the Brady Bunch, but he was a really funny guy, but he never liked to do comedies. Even way back in high school, his friends would say he always preferred dramas. He always preferred tragedies. That's what he liked about Shakespeare. He didn't really like doing the comedy. So he begrudgingly did the treatment did the first episode the pilot thinking that it was so hokey and so unbelievable and so not grounded in reality that no one would ever put it on the air and then they did so now he was a serious actor who saw himself as a leading man saw himself as a shakespearean actor who was going to be playing a father to six kids he was a gay man portraying this so if that secret ever got out possibly the show could end but he was also doing a comedy. He was doing something he didn't want to do. They were paying him well, and when the show debuted, the critics hated it, but people that watched it loved it. And the show went on to be a hit for five years, at least. It was a big enough hit to go into syndication, which is how I saw it, and that's you know where its life would really live on. With younger generations, they would see this family, this crazy slapstick family living through weird experiences and would see this amazing mother and father trying to guide them through it. Now apparently as good of an actor as he was, he was really hard to work with, at least for Sherwood Schwartz, the producer, because Sherwood said, even though I, you know, I totally appreciated what he was trying to do, which was he was trying to make the show more believable, more grounded. That's not really what the show was. And the show was supposed to be funny and slapstick. And he said he would, decided to make a stand on things that I didn't really think he had to make a stand on. And he just had the weirdest, harshest way of doing it. He said, for instance, one time he said, I remember getting a phone call and they said, hey, you're gonna have to come and talk to Bob right in the middle of the read through. He got up and went to his dressing room, closed the door and nobody knows why. So he said, you know, I went to his dressing room. I said, Bob, is everything okay? And he said, you want me to walk in and say, this smells like strawberry heaven and, you, and you're asking me if I'm okay? And Sherwood said, yeah, Bob, what's the problem? He goes, you really don't know, do you? Sherwood said, no, Bob, I don't. He said, I looked it up. Everyone knows that when you cook strawberries, they have no odor. You want me to say that? 
And Sherwood just couldn't believe it. He's like, I couldn't believe you'd make a stand on this. He said, and that was something he did every time. He would take every script, go through scene by scene, and anything he thought that could be questions or, or wasn't believable, he would bring it up or would, like, would refuse to do the scene. He said, so I said, hey, Bob, what if you just walked in and said, this is strawberry heaven, would you do that? And he said, yeah, I can do that. And they went back to filming. But he said, that's actually how kind of the show ended was that they had this episode they were going to do where Bobby was selling the hair tonic and Greg buys it and it turns his hair green and everything and he said Robert calls me Bob calls me and says I refuse to do this show I will not do this this is so unbelievable I can't believe it Sherwood said well you know one of our sponsors <laughs> <laughs> they sold hair tonics and and we had talked to them and they said they were getting lawsuit threats all the time because all hair is different and you know when you put stuff on your hair odd things can happen and things like that were happening so he said so it wasn't that far-fetched but Bob just flat out said I refuse to do this I'm not gonna do this and he said I was in the middle of shaving when that all kind of went down he said I just started thinking about it. I'm thinking well Bob's really not that big of a part of this episode anyway what if I gave this line of his to so-and-so and this line he said next thing I knew I was thinking hey we can remove him from the episode what few lines he had give to, to the other actors and uh, I think we can do this so he went to the office got his secretary to dictate all the changes and then Robert Reed's manager agent called and said Robert's not happy he just called me told me he's not happy what are you gonna do about it and they said nothing Sherwood said he's he has the week off and the agent said, wait, what? Sherwood said, because you gotta realize that in those days, if you weren't in the episode, not only did you not get paid, you also didn't get the residuals, you didn't get any of that stuff for the episode. So his agent calls Robert and Robert complains, you know, how can I not be in the episode? Sherwood said, simple, you told me that you weren't gonna do it. So I wrote you out of it. So you don't have to come to work this week. You can go golf, you can, take a vacation you can do whatever you want to do but you don't have to come to work he said Robert showed up anyway and Sherwood felt that that was really bad for morale for the kids it was you know Robert even though his wife had moved her and his daughter at the age of one to Chicago Robert had really no contact with his daughter he agreed when that happened to let well, his ex-wife had met another man and they wanted to adopt Robert's daughter, Aunt Karen, and, and so Robert agreed that that would be best for her upbringing. So he wasn't really a father to his own daughter, but the Brady kids, he absolutely saw himself as their father and treated it so the kids kind of saw him that way. And so Sherwood, when Robert showed up, said, you know, I knew this was going to confuse the kids if they saw him and he wasn't in the episode and everything. So I said, Bob, please, please just go off to the side. I don't care where you're at, but stay out of their eye line. Bob said, this show means a lot to me. I want to be here. I'm going to stand here. I want to see it. And so he said, so I called the network, called Paramount, told him what was going on. They said, we'll send two security down to remove him. And I said, hey, no, 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 you can't do that. These kids cannot see, you know, maybe the adults would understand, but the kids cannot see their father on the show being removed by security. That would be really bad. And so he went and he said, I made one last plea to Bob. I said, Bob, will you please just go to your trailer and I'll call you and you can come look at things once we have them a little bit more worked out. Just make it easy on everybody. So he said, Bob did agree to do that, but that ended up being the last show, the series was not renewed he was not in the last episode even though it was something he didn't originally want to do he looked at it as something that was a part of him and that show meant a lot to him and every time they would do a reunion or anything like that he would always agree to do it because he wanted to see the kids and see his family again now he didn't really have much of a relationship with his daughter Karen like I said apparently Karen was in an episode of the Brady Bunch with Florence Henderson's daughter but other than that he didn't really see her he let her new adopted father be her father and he did though however buy a big mansion in Pasadena and moved his folks in it was like a three-floor mansion and gave his parents an entire wing but once his father passed away his mother stayed living there for a while and then all of a sudden 
His mother moved back to Oklahoma out of nowhere. No one ever knew why. Um, apparently her and Bob had gotten into some sort of argument and Florence Henderson said, you know, she said, I saw him one time and I said, how's your mom doing? He said, I don't know, I haven't talked to her in six years. And I said, Bob, that's your mom, you know, she's an old lady, she needs you, 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 you gotta, whatever it is, you, it, nothing could be that big. And he said, nope, that's it, that's it. Didn't want anything to do with her at all. So after the Brady Bunch ended, he did a lot of television, um, did a lot of different parts, even played a, a part where he was a, a man who wanted to have a sex change, did all kinds of stuff and including all of the Brady stuff. And in 1990, they wanted to do another Brady show, which they originally slated for six episodes. And it was basically the family getting back together and seeing where they were at now with the problems of everyday life. But Florence Henderson said even during the filming of that, he was back to kind of the old Bob where she said he was arguing with them about scenes. And she said, finally, she had enough and said, Bob, just let us film this thing. And he said, hey, I've made a, a long lasting career. I don't want it ruined because of this. And she said, well, then maybe you need a new career because we are all here happy, happy to be working. And we just want to film this scene. Can you just knock it off for once? But she said during the filming of that, she noticed that he was looking really kind of weak, not as energetic as she always knew him to be. He was thinner and they would find out a year later that, uh, well, he would find out anyway, that he was HIV positive. Even with that, he didn't make amends with his mother. He did apparently when he started getting really sick, he, he not only was HIV positive, but he found out he had colon cancer as well. So apparently he did make amends with his daughter and his daughter came out to Los Angeles and she was one of the only two people he would allow in the hospital to visit him while he was sick. But his secret, you know, he, he was a closeted gay man his entire career. He was never able to let that out, was afraid it would ruin his career. Never had a long lasting partner either. Uh, people, friends of his said that he, they kind of got the impression that he was always afraid if he got too close to somebody, it could be a problem later. So he never had a long-term partner. When he ended up passing away, they did put that the cause of death was complications from HIV as well. So everyone then knew about his secret life after his passing, which is sad. You know, that was something he wanted to keep private and something that now would not probably hinder his career at all. You can see it says, good night, sweet prince, because he loved Shakespeare and that was a line from Hamlet. Apparently there was a funeral service for him in Pasadena at the church that he went to and all the Brady family was there to pay respects and his friends were there. But his daughter and his mother were not there. Um, I don't know if they ended up having another private family or ceremony at a different point or a different time. But um, I did read that neither one of them were in attendance for the one in Pasadena, which is kind of sad to hear. Rest in peace, Robert Reed. The whole reason he ended up changing his name, it, it, that was not a name he liked at all, Robert Reed. When he got his first studio contract, they said that they didn't think that the TZ at the end of his last name looked good on a marquee. And he didn't feel that he had the power to speak up for himself in those days, that he had those, you know, that option to make that decision. And so he went with it and that's what the professional name he would always be known by. But I think we would all, probably just call him Mike Brady. I did love reading and finding interviews with the Brady kids and them telling how much they cared about him, how much he came off like their father. And in fact, in 1972, which would have been, I guess the third season during the off time, he actually took all the kids with his parents and a teacher, a studio teacher, and took them all on a week-long trip to both New York and to his old stomping grounds in London and introduced them to all the things that inspired him, which I thought was really cool. So thank you all for watching. Rest in peace, Mr. Robert Reed, Mr. Uh, John Robert Reitz Jr., Mike Brady. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great night from Skokie, Illinois. Goodbye. <laughs>